Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the Aspiring Medics. I'm Arisma, a medical student at King's College London and in today's video I'm going to take you through the Medical School's Council values, what they are, why they're important and how you can include them in your application. So let's get started. The Medical School Council has released a statement on the core values and attributes needed to study medicine. You can find the link to the document in the description box below, but this video is a step-by-step -step breakdown of all the skills the MSc looks for in candidates and how you can show you possess these skills. But what is the Medical Schools Council? The Medical Schools Council is an organisation that represents medical schools in the United Kingdom and is made up of the heads or deans of these medical schools. MSc values are mapped to the General Medical Council's Good Medical Practice document, which is the overarching ethical guidance for doctors in the UK. Medical schools in the UK aim to prepare students for practice in the NHS, and therefore they're looking for students who have the potential to become good doctors. However, this is not an exhaustive list, and individual medical schools will also have particular skills or attributes that they're looking for in potential students, and these are known as selection criteria. It is also important to note that the assessment of academic ability is also an essential part of the medical school selection process. Medical schools are looking for applicants who have the correct academic background and academic aptitude and they must also be able to demonstrate the values and attributes set out in this statement. The Medical School Council also recommends you to read the GMC's outcomes for graduates before you apply to med school as this will give you a sense of what medical school will involve. But what is the MSc value statement? This statement applies these skills that are necessary in all medical students and doctors and relates these to medical practice and medical school expectations of students and applicants. Applicants are advised to read the statement carefully and to reflect on how they might demonstrate these values and attributes during the selection process. Of course, these examples can be used in the personal statement, but also during interviews. The MSc values can also broadly be divided into four categories and we will be going through that in more detail in the upcoming slides. Now it's important to show medical schools that you possess these values and skills by drawing on your personal experiences. Work experience, of course, is a great way to show this, but they don't just include hospitals and GP placements, but also pharmacies and opticians. Any experience counts. Have you ever worked as a barista or a cashier? These experiences have also taught you valuable skills that may be useful to mention. Of course, volunteering experiences can help demonstrate your empathy and communication skills. Other social activities and educational experiences are also useful ways to demonstrate that you possess skills that medical schools value and that you've spent considerable time developing these skills. Our first category is Knowledge, Skills and Performance. Below are statements taken directly from Good Medical Practice, the overarching ethical guidance for doctors in the UK, and these statements were relevant to this particular category. You must always develop and maintain your professional performance. Remember, professionalism is a key skill in the field of medicine. You also must be able to apply your knowledge and experience to practice. Remember, medicine is an ever-evolving field and there's constant research being done. It's important that you're able to critique this research Research and add relevant parts to your practice. You must also be able to record your work clearly, accurately and legibly and this links to your communication skills. Moving on to the skills within this category. First off, we have your motivation to study medicine. This can be anything, maybe a personal experience from your childhood, it could be your work experience, or just the fact that you can apply scientific knowledge to a practical setting. It's important that you mention your motivation in the first paragraph of your personal statement. This is also a very common question at interviews. Number two, we have personal organization. As a medical student and a doctor, you will constantly be juggling multiple responsibilities. Your personal organization and time management skills will be key to thrive both in university and as a qualified doctor. Number three, academic ability. Of course, academic ability and aptitude are key skills that med schools are looking for. You will be covering a wide breadth and depth of topics in med school and will also have to keep updating your knowledge even after becoming a qualified doctor. It is important that you show that you are a keen learner. Of course, med schools will have access to your grades and test scores, but talking about academic endeavours outside the classroom may also be useful and show your commitment to medicine. Fourth, we have problem solving. Doctors are constantly faced with problems, whether that be an ethical issue, just a tough case, or a matter of prioritizing tasks. It's important to show that you can calmly make decisions and solve problems. 
This, of course, is tested in the UCAT exam in the decision-making and situational judgment sections. And lastly, we have conscientiousness, which is the quality of wishing to do one's work or duty well and thoroughly. Showing long-term commitment to projects might help demonstrate this quality. Our next category is maintaining safety and ensuring the delivery of good quality healthcare. It is important for you to always follow guidelines set out by the GMC and NHS because they ensure maximum patient safety. It is also important for you to respond to risks safely and be insightful about your own health so you can protect your patients and colleagues. The first skill here is risk management. Of course, this is a key skill. Not only should you be able to weigh out the pros and cons of a situation, but you must also be able to do this with a level head and solve problems as fast as possible. It is common for med schools to ask about instances where you solved problems or managed risks effectively during interviews. It is also important for you to take responsibility for your own actions. Everyone makes mistakes, but it is important to own up to them and rectify them as soon as possible. Again, a very common interview question. As I've mentioned before, having an insight into your own health is important so you can protect patients and colleagues. Medicine will definitely make you face some difficult situations. From the intense workload of med schools to the sad realities of placement, you will always be faced with problems. However, med schools want students who are resilient and won't quit even after facing these problems and difficult situations. Talking about a time you failed but then picked yourself back up is a good way to demonstrate resilience. As we're dealing with difficult situations, you will also be faced with lots of uncertainty as a medical student and doctor, as has been made evident throughout the pandemic. Being a problem solver and being resilient are ways to show that you are confident in yourself and your ability to deal with uncertainty. Having a strong motivation to study medicine can also show this. Our next category is communication, partnership and teamwork. Effective communication is key in medicine, both with patients and colleagues. Collaboration and teamwork are also important to ensure continuity and coordination of good quality healthcare. Again, since medicine is constantly evolving, teaching, training and assessment are a part of career progression. So being comfortable both as a teacher and as a student is important. With the patient-centered care model becoming increasingly popular, it is important to establish and maintain partnerships with patients that are based upon trust, compassion, and care. Good communication is vital for this. Firstly, it is important to be reflective and have an insight into your own strengths and weaknesses. The personal statement is your opportunity to show admissions officers that you are reflective and can reflect on your own work. Reflect on every experience you've had. What have you learned from them? It is also important to be reflective in your interviews. Watch out for a video on reflecting for the personal statement that comes out next week where we go through reflection frameworks that are recommended by med schools and how to implement them in your personal statement. Effective communication is key to establishing a good doctor-patient relationship and this is with regards to reading, writing, listening and speaking. It is also important to have a clear line of communication with your colleagues. An important aspect of communication is tailoring it to the needs of the person you're talking to. Explaining conditions in layman terms to patients is one example of this. This skill is often tested in interviews, especially in role play stations in the MMI format of interviews. And lastly, teamwork of course is essential. You need to be a good team player with not just other doctors, but also within the multidisciplinary team. You can show you're a good team player by talking about team-based extracurricular activities such as sport teams or orchestras. Our final category is maintaining the patient's trust. This encompasses showing respect for patients and their condition and acting honestly and with integrity. All doctors take an oath to treat patients fairly and without any sort of discrimination. These skills are fairly straightforward. Respect, empathy and honesty are all key skills that all doctors should possess. You can show you've developed these skills by citing your volunteering experiences. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you found this video useful, make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. See you next time.